feel like seeing another verse of that. Is that all right? That feels good to me. What else going to be? Jesus in me. shall flow rivers of living water, yes, yes. just as you have given it unto me for your people, Lord. I give you the glory, and I praise you, and I thank you right now, God, for who you are, Lord. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. I want to give honor to Overseer. Thank God for Overseer. Amen. Overseer is Overseer. <laughs> he has a great sense of humor, and I just thank the Lord for him. A wonderful man of God. I also want to thank the Lord for my pastor. Yes. Pastor yes. Emma Jean Ingram. Yes. Amen. I thank God for pastor. She's a woman that has great wisdom. Yes. She's a woman of wisdom. Yes. Yes. Amen. She's a great woman of women. Words of wisdom. Her lifestyle speaks of God's holiness. And I thank you for that, Pastor. Yes. In Jesus' name, I give honor to Elder Kenny and his yes. companion, to everyone in the house of faith, but last but not least, but definitely not least, I give honor to Elder. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> to Deacon. Deacon. Let me correct that. He's yes. a deacon now. He's a deacon. Deacon Kevin Emmanuel. Oh, the king of my castle and the love of my soul. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I thank God for my husband. Wave your hand, baby. Just let everybody know who you are. Let's give it a hand. Amen. I thank the Lord for my husband. I have a wonderful man of God. We are a team. We work together. Yeah. It is Kevin and Sheila. Not Sheila and Sheila, Kevin and Kevin. So I just thank the Lord today for who he is. And I thank the Lord for what he has done. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the Holy Ghost today. And I'm excited about the Word of God. The, the title for the lesson today is The Language of My Father. The language of my father. I thank God today for his greatness. I thank him for his confirmation. Amen. For his word. I thank him for the strength that I feel in my body right now. I thank him for the Holy Ghost that I feel that is impressing upon me to deliver his word. And I just thank God in Jesus' name for being God all by himself. So I'm going to get right into the word today. I feel the Lord has given me today as I was praying, um, Lord, what should I give your people? Because, you know, we can think certain things or whatever, but how many of you all know that God knows the heart of his people? Yes. And he knows what we have need of before we ask. Yes. He knows what the people that we are ministering to have need of. Yes. So I pray that you would hear what the word of the Lord has given me today. And truly, it is a word from the Lord. So it says that um, I'm going to be talking about how in the last days, how false prophets shall come. And, and how people will come and they will say things that the word of God does not say. Oh, and the yeah. importance of having the word of God yeah, in yeah, your yeah, heart yeah, for yeah. yourself so that you cannot be deceived when the enemy comes. Yeah. Because the yeah. enemy doesn't come with the, with the shirt, uh, with, with, with the mm. words across his, his chest saying, I am the enemy and I come to mm. deceive you. Oh, he likes to come oh, yeah. in, with what you <laughs> desire. So mm. he doesn't come at all of us in the same way because, you know, many times we talk about God knows us and how much God knows us. But how many of you know that that the enemy checks you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows what you like. He knows what you don't like. Yeah. He knows what you want that you know you can't have. He knows those things. So he doesn't come with a pitchfork in his hand and a red suit on saying, I'm the devil and I'm coming to get you. But he dresses himself up and yeah. he, he forms himself into an angel of life. Yeah. And he makes excuses. Yeah. He tells you that it's okay to just do it mm -hmm. this time. He tells you that, that you know, you can do this and just ask the Lord to forgive you. He will forgive you. So we don't want to be deceived by the enemy. And this is what the Lord has laid on my heart for the church today. 
The church, is a, the church and the genuine believer have to be consistently on guard against false teaching. The terrible danger of false teaching always confronts the church and believers. This is a, this is a revelation of the spirit of God himself. It is not the idea of some preacher or recognition because of a noble idea. Right. It is the warning of the spirit of God. Oh, yeah. This is the latter days. And God wants us to be ready. He wants us to prepare. He wants us to, to get the word of God in us. Because, saints, we have our Bibles now. Yeah. And we can study them, right? Yeah. We can go from here to there. And I thank God that, you know, we're able to go to the New Testament, the Old Testament. But we're going to have to, we'll have to put it in our heart. Yeah. Like David yeah. said, thy word have I, have I hid. Yeah. He said he hid it in his heart. And he had a purpose for, for hiding it in his heart because he did not want to sin against the Father. Yes. Now, we know that the enemy has taken prayer out of schools. We have allowed, as the Christian believers, for the enemy to come and do many things that we should not be where we are today. Amen. And we only had have stood up for what God yes. says and what his word yes. says. Yes. Amen. 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 So in 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, it says that, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. The Spirit has spoken expressively, that is, in specific terms. It is, it is in plain words, it is distinctly, so that there can be no question about about what it is saying. False teachers will arise in the last days. Uh -huh. How many of y'all know that this is the last days? Let's go to Matthew 16, 13 through 18. And the word of God says, and the word of God says, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but the Father which is in heaven. Many times as Jesus was with the disciples, he would often ask them, Who do men say that I am? Amen. Because the disciples had ears and they were here. You know how we talk and we listen and we hear. And they would say, oh, John the Baptist. <laughs> or, you know, they start thinking, oh, you know, um, uh, let's see, maybe he, he is uh, uh, Peter, or maybe he is... Uh, who, who, whoever they thought that was good in, in their eyes. But then the Lord was saying, he, he began to ask them a person. Jesus hardly, ever, Jesus hardly ever did ask them, who do men say that I am without asking them, who do you say uh -huh. that I am? And then, you know what? They began to tell him. Well, not they began to tell him. Let me slow down because I'm going to say this if I have to say it. Piece by piece. Amen. Amen. And the 17 verses says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thy Simon or Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus was letting him know that that did not come from your, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. That did not come from what the language of the world, what the world is telling you. Because the world have their own version of who Jesus is. Oh, and they will impress their version upon you. But when you know that you know that you know who Jesus is, oh, then you can God. stand up in the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, and so yes. it goes on to say, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against oh, it. Amen? Amen. Amen? So we thank the Lord that 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 Peter, that I'm sorry, that Simon began to tell them who Jesus was. And 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 then the Lord began to let him know that that did not come from you just saying this, but it came from the Father. So yes. what we have to do is have relationship with the Lord. We have to get to know him as he is and as the word says, and we have to stand flat-footed on that and not be shaken yes. and not be moved. So I ask a person to you today, who do you say that he is? Mm -hmm. Who is he to you? Is he the son of the living God? Because there are many gods, mm -hmm. but who is your God? Because everybody doesn't, if there's a decision to be made and you have the freedom. And that's what I love about God. God gives us the freedom. He doesn't yes, make us yes. choose him. Yes. He sent his only begotten son to, you know, he lived, he, he suffered, he bled, and he died. He, he already made the way. The table is already spread. But God still gives us the choice to choose. Yes, yes. If he wanted us, if, if we would have no choice if he said we would have no choice. Mm -hmm. But God is not that type of God. 
I find him to be the God that will make a way for you mm -hmm. and allow you to choose whether you want to take the way he made or choose whether you want to take the way of man. Amen? Amen. False teachers depart from the faith. They are within the church, within the field of religion. These passages is not dealing with the philosophies and false teaching taught by unbelievers out in the world. It is talking about false teachers within the church itself. The Spirit of God is warning us. Some preachers and some teachers will turn away from the faith and become false teachers. Oh my God. Yeah. Every devil ain't always been a devil. That's right. But somewhere along the way, the devil is a deceiver. Yeah. Yeah. He comes Big to time. tell you in every way that God is not real. Yeah. The word of God tells us that when we are weak in our weakness, and through the power of God, we can say that we are healed, and we can say that we are strong, and we can say that we are more than conquerors. But the enemy will tell you, how can you say that when you know you're feeling bad in your body? But there is a language of the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They will turn away from the Lord Jesus Christ, always from the teaching of the death, burial, and resurrection and return of Jesus Christ. So be aware of false teachers. Be aware of the enemy that comes in sheep clothing and tell you things that are against the word of God. Yeah. God gives us the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He lives inside of us. Yeah. The word of God tells us that he will lead and guide yeah. us into what? All, All truth. truth. All Amen. Amen. While we're complaining about the shutdown, the devil is preparing for a comeback. Yeah. We're sitting around and we're talking about everything that's going on and it's good to know, but we know these things to pray for these things because the prayers of the righteous yeah. truly do avail oh, much. Yeah. When the saints come together and begin to pray yeah. on one accord, yeah. things in the atmosphere, they have to shift. Yeah. That's yeah. the strength yeah. and the power of God. That's the strength and the unshakable anointing yeah. that God gives us as believers. Yeah. We have to know who we are and who we belong to. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 1st through the 4th verse, Paul was telling the Corinthian church to stand on the word and remember what he has said. That's why it's good to be faithful. It's good to be faithful. We have a Bible-believing church, and when you study the word of God, when you give attention to it, take notes, write it in your heart, and then you know, once you do what you're supposed to do, you don't really have to worry about it. Because, and I'm saying this because so many people struggle with the fact that I can't recall this. I can't, I can't remember that. I this and that. But that is what the Holy Spirit in you will do. Yes. You're not going to walk around and remember Genesis from Revelation. But if you walk in the Spirit of God, if you stay in tune with Him, if you stay in His presence, He'll speak to you. Yeah. He'll speak to you in the midst of a crowded world, in the midst of all voices. You will hear his voice and know that it is your God. You can call upon him late in the midnight hour, in the midst of the storm. Hold fast to that which is right. Hold fast to what the Lord God have told us. Don't swift to the right, don't swift to the left, knowing that God's word stands assured. He is faithful concerning his promises. He's not a God that he should lie. He will do just what he said. Amen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, but which, which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. You got to say it over and over. You got to live it out. Life will teach you how to live the word of God, because you're going to come into some places. And you're going to have to use the sword of the spirit. And this is how we grow. It doesn't matter. We got to stop looking with our natural eyes. Right, yeah. But we have to take the word of God. It doesn't matter where we are placed because the enemy, the, the spirit of the Lord will allow you to go into dark places. Uh -huh. Because you are the light. Yeah. Not to become the darkness, but to, for the darkness to become the light. Yeah. So we have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not to our own understanding. You don't have to understand everything, but all you have to do is know the word of God. Because the word of God, the Holy Spirit will transform it into you himself. Yeah. He will yeah. send you into the darkness. And when you used to be shaken out in the world, when you used to walk in unsurety and don't know what to do, people are panicking. People are going crazy. But not the children of God. We have the same word that God gave Adam and Eve. We have the same word that God gave Paul and Silas. We have the same word that God gave Everybody in the Bible, his word changes not. He is the same always, yesterday, today.
today and forevermore. He doesn't change. And that's what I love about God. Life is changing. Time is changing. Seasons is changing. When you look around, everything is changing. We're not where we used to be. We're not where we're going to be. But God stands assured. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus paid the price. Let's remember what the word of God has said. 1 Peter 2 and 24 through 25. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who his own set bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. For ye were a sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our soul. Hallelujah. He is the bishop of our soul. He is the way, he is the truth and the life. And he will do just what he said he would do. And we have to say that we are who he said we are. It's not based on a feeling. It's not based on a mood. But we have to stand up and say that we are the children of God. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter what the world, how the world changes. God is yet God. He has never changed. Amen. There is only one true faith that can save a person. One true faith. That can save a person. A person can have all kinds of faith. He can have faith in all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. He can have faith in all kinds of things. Because Lord knows there are some things that we make God out of. Amen. Oh, he can have faith in different religions. It's, oh, it's, it's everything out there. Choose you what you will choose. But only one faith can save a person. The faith of the son of the living God. And his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ. This is the faith from which a person must never depart. We have to get it in our heart. It has to go beyond the words of our mouth. Beyond the words of our mouth, but down in our soul. Hallelujah. We have to get it down in our soul and let it not depart from us. His word says that when we are weak in our weakness, he is made strong through us. That's what the word of God said. So no matter how the enemy come, I'm strong in him. No matter how the enemy knock you down, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He can knock you down, but he can't keep you down. Because greater is he that is in you when Christ is in you than he that is in the world. And Jesus don't let nobody knock him down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has risen from the dead, ye shall be saved. Oh, Hallelujah. I used to hear old saints say, I don't know, I may have said this to myself, but hurry up and get saved. Oh, what you waiting on? Yeah. You can live it day by day, but this day, the day you hear my voice, he said, harden not your heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Examine me, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Thank you, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3 and 16. Hallelujah. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We used to sing a, call, sing a song called Everlasting Life. Thank you, Jesus. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He didn't come to give you a lot of rules and regulations. He come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. God sent his son into the world. He didn't send him to condemn you, but that the world through him might be saved. If you get saved and get the Holy Ghost, then you don't have to worry about a lot of things you struggle with if you trust the Lord that is within, because the Holy Ghost is truly a teacher. Once you get the Holy Ghost and you begin to study God's word, he begin to talk to you. He'll begin, see the Bible says that he that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And spirit and truth. So it goes beyond just the confession, but you got to believe it in your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Believe on him. It says, but he, but he that believeth is not, con but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And his name is? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 6 and 40 says, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, yeah. and I will raise him up at the last day. Oh my God, my God. 
John 14 and 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I love it. I love it. I love it. I am the way. I am the truth. So many people saying, well, what's the right way? What's the right way? The word of God is right. And there is only one way. And saints, God, a lot of things Jesus spoke for the world, but a lot of speaking Jesus did was for the church. Yeah. A lot of things he was trying to get the disciples to see. Who do they say that I am? Who do they say that I am? Who have you heard that they're saying that is Jesus? Hallelujah. But when you have the Holy Spirit, all these things that are to come and that is present now, the Holy Spirit will let you know. The Holy yeah. Spirit will speak to you. God said he would not leave us faithless. He would not leave us alone. We have to trust in him and we have to stand firm on his word. Get you one word. Don't let the devil tell you what you can't do. But see, the Father has a language. And if you speak the language of the Father, yeah. it, will, it, will, it will transform you from darkness into light. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Thomas was shown. Thomas, Thomas was a show me disciple. Let's go to John 20, 25, and 31. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thomas said, just like a lot of us say, a lot of people say, show me. That's what you say, show me. Hallelujah. The 25th verse, the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except I see in his hands the print and of the nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now, a lot of people throw a, a stone at Thomas for saying that, but hey, Thomas is Thomas. How many people have you, Sarah, you, you, how many people have criticized what you believe? Y'all believe in a God you have not seen. Yeah. Uh -uh, I, I just can't get with that. You know, I, I, I don't see you, you laying up there and you talking about you are healed. You know, I can't, I can't get with that. That's okay. And after eight days, time went by. How many of y'all know that God knows our heart when, he, when we're not speaking with our mouth? God knows our hearts. Sometimes we, you know, I don't want us to, to look down on the sinner man because we have to remember that we haven't always been yeah. saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But just as God had compassion, just as Jesus, what Jesus did for us was compassion for us. Yeah. It was because he loved us. Thomas said, except I see the nail print in his hand and except I put my hand in his side, you can keep all of that because I'm not believing. Amen. But Jesus, Jesus heard him. Now, after eight days, again, the disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. They gathered together again, and Thomas was with them this time. Jesus coming through the door being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. I just wonder why Jesus had to say, peace be unto you. That's, that's a mean thing. I, you know, the door was shut and Jesus appeared because he's a spirit. He didn't have to open no door. Hallelujah. So anyway, Jesus said, peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and see my hands. Reach hither thy hand and put it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas had to see. He was a doubter. We doubt some things. Come on, let's be real. Really, we do. Amen. But God is telling us to, to take his word, to, to put his word in our heart. Jesus said unto him, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. I did not, I did not see and I was not there when they put the nail prints in my Savior's head. I wasn't there when they pierced it in the side. But one thing I can tell you is, I know that God is real. And I don't have to see it. I don't put it in a quest, Lord, show me. I know because I know he lives. Not because I worship him with lip service, but because he lives within me. He is a friend that sticks closer than any brother. When I need a friend, he's always there. There's a thing called the midnight hour when a lot of things happen in darkness at midnight hour. But oh, God's light will shine in the midst of the midnight hour. He'll give you peace to your worriness. He'll calm your, your aching soul. God is God and he's God all by himself. Hallelujah. Many are many other signs, therefore, that Jesus in his in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. The book couldn't hold everything that Jesus did. Right. But we have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We have to lean not to our own understanding. God knows our understanding can take us places that only Jesus can get us out of. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But we don't have to lean to our own understanding because we have the word of God and we have to get it down in our soul. Sounding the alarm today is saints that we have to prepare ourselves. We have to prepare for the worst and pray for the best because Jesus is soon to come. We have to be ready. We can't watch the world go out and pack up on stuff. We can't watch the world go and build holes in the ground. They're trying to protect themselves from the future. We have God inside of us alive. Jesus Christ alive and well. Our voice has to sound the alarm and we have to let them know that our God is real. We have to give them a reason for the faith that is within us. They don't understand why we can trust in the Lord. They don't understand how we can testify of his goodness. But we can tell you how we can trust in the Lord. Because he is my God. He is the light in my darkness. He is my healer. Hallelujah. It doesn't make no difference what the enemy do. God is God all by himself. False teachers. Hallelujah. Be careful how you sway. And listen to people that don't teach you the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because when you're used to hearing what is right, when you hear what's wrong, your spirit won't agree with it. Mm -hmm. right. So don't just keep on listening. You know, sometimes you just, I just want to hear what, what he got to say today. Mm -hmm. yeah. What she say? I just want to hear the rest of that. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, your hand on your head is saying, well, no, mm -hmm. you know, uh-uh. You have the Holy Spirit for a reason. That's right. Don't reject it. Listen to it. Now, this, this God gave me to give you. Now, thank the Lord for Ella Kenny. You know, I thank God for the Holy Ghost that confirmed it at home. But God is saying pay attention because sometimes we don't know all we think we know. Sometimes we think we got this thing and we got it all together and I don't need you to tell me nothing. But the enemy is as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. Seeking. Looking. Looking for your sons and your daughters. Looking for your grandchildren. Looking, looking, seeking whom he can change. Whom he can transform. Not because he can't transform you into an angel of God's life. But he can transform you from God to an angel of his life. The enemy can do this. And he has the power to do it. We, gotta, we, don't, don't, we have to understand that Satan is real. You're fooling yourself. We don't want to be so sanctified that we're no earthly good. The Bible tells us to watch and pray. Why do he tell us to, to watch while we're praying? Because while we're building and while the enemy is doing all these things, all the enemy do, and this is something that I see lately, is every time a big bang came or a big something with the news channel, the church, I, everything give attention to, the enemy is working. He's working. So when you decide to realize that this didn't settle down, do you notice that every time one big thing happened, once it settled down, everybody forget about it, then there's something new? We have to be, we have to pay attention, saints. We have to know that the enemy is no friend of ours. False teachers give attention to seducing spirits and teaching of devils. There are all kinds of evil spirits throughout the world. Spirits that are set on seducing and deceiving people. Pay attention to the homework that your children, your child, or whatever bring home. Whoever you do. Because some of us have grandchildren or whatever. Look at things that you have not looked at before. And if you know people or you have children, tell them, and this is how I get it, pay attention to the fine detail. Because the enemy doesn't show you that he's the enemy. But he likes to ease it in in a place where if you don't give attention to it, you say, oh, it's just a dollar. You know how people make false money and they make it so real that they can't even catch it? <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. I got that from my husband. He will tell you, he, he will put it in the fine details. And, 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 and if you don't know it, if you don't pay attention to it, you, you, you won't see it. And then the enemy doesn't just give you something and drop it. Just like we are the seed of the earth and, and, and we are to go and we are to plant seeds, one water, one plant, and God get the increase. The enemy will plant a seed. And it's to be watered by somebody. And it is going to grow. So God is telling us to be aware. Don't be foolish to the devices of the enemy. There are all kinds of evil spirits throughout the world. Throughout the world. Spirits that are set on seducing and deceiving people. They are set on leading people to follow them and their ideas of teaching. So they're going to ease it in in a subtle way. And I know some of you said this ain't new. You've heard it before. But you haven't heard it today. You haven't heard it today because today ain't when you heard it before. And this is what the Lord is telling us. Homeschool is not a bad thing when, when you're able or when you're capable of doing that these days. Because, see, the enemy is planning. He's planning for a comeback. He's planning for a comeback. We're focusing on what he wants us to focus on while he is planning for a comeback. They do all 
They do all they can to turn people away from the doctrine and the faith of Christ. The method they use is not a frontal attack. It's not a clear, but you can just see, this is what I'm coming at. I'm coming at the soul. It is not a loud declaration. They don't have a sign like we have up here that says, I'm the devil and I'm coming after your soul. Against the truth, they mix some truth with error. Doesn't that sound just like the devil? Their method is to, to seduce, deceive, dilute, to charm, to lure, entice, attack, and to appear as life and truth. Oh Everybody that laugh is not tickled. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Everybody that shake your hand does not agree with what's within you. All scripture in, in 2 Corinthians 3 and 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctoring, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. We are not to be afraid, but we are to be aware. God has not called us to be ignorant. Yes. Let the church say amen. 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 I want to share with you a thought from William Barclay. I, I don't know, I think I've heard this before, but I'm going to give you how it was given to me. Yes. It says, it was from these evil spirits and demons that this false teaching came. But through it came from, but though it came from demons, it came through men. Hmm. How do they access? How do the money spirits have access? Now that's that's she. I said that. Okay, let me get back to this. Now here is the here is the threatening and the terrible thing. What we we know that God and God's spirits are everywhere looking for men to use. God is always searching for men who will be His instruments, His weapon, His tools in the world. But here we come face to face with the terrible fact that the forces of evil are also looking for men to use. Just as God seeks men for his purpose, the forces of evil seek men for their purposes. Here is the terrible responsibility of manhood. Man can accept the service of God or the service of the devil. We have a choice. God gives us that choice. Man can become as instruments of the supreme God or the supreme evil. Mm -hmm. Men are faced with the eternal choice. Whom are we to give our lives? To God or to God's enemy? Hmm. Oh, My Lord. In Joshua, the 24th chapter, I'm almost, I'm almost done. Go ahead, In Joshua, the 24th chapter, Joshua challenged the people to make immediate action, to get right with God. The call of Israel was to make a decision for the Lord. In this verse 14, he indicates that the Lord's personal message to Israel now has ended and that Joshua himself is giving the exhortation up to the Israelites. Up to this point, Joshua had been preaching the prophetic message of the Lord, but now he, sh he shares from his heart. This is his final message to the people. The last opportunity will ever that last opportunity will ever have to extend an invitation to call to God's people to make a decision for God. This mm -hmm. is one of them, the most straightforward invitation ever given, one of the most clear-cut decisions ever presented to people. Yeah. The strong exhortation was straightforward. Joshua challenged the people to take immediate action, to get it together, to get it right with God. Joshua 24, 14 through 24 says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods from which your fathers served on the other side of the flood in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And if that seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose. 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 You have a choice. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Rather be God which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites, in those land in whose land ye dwell. But as for me <laughs> and my house, what's your decision? What's your choice? Joshua let them know. Now I'm gonna tell you it's come time for you to make a decision who you're gonna serve. But for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. 
And the people start testifying. Sometimes you got to bring back to remembrance how good God been to you. When you find yourself looking at everything that's wrong, when your frown, when your smile is turned upside down, when you seem like gloomy, you get out of bed and you don't just don't feel like worshiping today. You got to remember where God brought you from. Yes. yes. And the people answered and said, I'm at the 16th verse now. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he is that he is the God that brought us up out of our father's land of Egypt from the house of bondage, in which did ye great signs in our sight. He preserved us, and then it goes on to say that he kept us and among all the people from whom we passed. The Lord and the Lord great and the Lord drove out from, from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwell in the land. Therefore I will also serve the Lord, for he is our great God. Sometimes you got to get yourself together. Sometimes you got to come back. Be honest with yourself and be real with yourself. And saints, let's 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 stop skipping steps because this is what I'm saying. We have so many opportunities um, on our job or, or when we're talking to our children. We don't ever want God to show us to set us still and show us the people that are passed by us that we were even because some of us want to be deep and say gave the word of God from this book in that chapter and just didn't say hello because sometimes hello can cause a, a joy in a person's heart can cause them to smile while well, when their head was down you know if, if I'm talking to you and your head is down usually you will look up so we have to have a, a, a seasoned word a, a, a good word and, and it's not always thus said the Lord thy God or a hookah masaka and, and all of this just tell people that God is real just tell people that he is real and that he lives hallelujah yes. you will be surprised the word that God have in your mouth that will bring life to someone that's just passing by Listen to the Holy Spirit. sometimes you have to stop and remember where God have brought you from Joshua had to be reminded. Joshua had to remind the people. The 13th verse said, and I have given you and I have given you land. He said that you did not labor, cities that you did not build. He yeah. gave them vineyards. He gave them, I mean, these people were yeah. so blessed. Sometimes, you know, I mean, just so blessed. Blessed in abundance. Yeah. You know, blessed in abundance that we forget where we came from. Hallelujah. Don't focus on the darkness so that you be blinded. By the light, by the light of God. We have to turn these things around. God is good and he is good all the time. He is good in the midst of darkness. He is our hope in trouble. God is God is good. If God is good to you, let's give him a praise out there. Right there. <laughs> Romans 8 and 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's right. elect? Right. It is God that justifies. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm, I'm thinking about the lady. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I got one message to preach, and I got to stick with this one. Thank you, Lord. Who is he that, y'all understand, who is he that commanded? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. The enemy may be an accuser of the brethren, but Jesus make intercession for us. Yes. In Romans 5 and 8, it says, but God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In Romans 5 and 6, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. John 3 and 16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Hallelujah. Galatians 1 and 4, who giveth himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world. Somebody said, from the present evil world. According to the will of God, our Father. Isaiah 53 and 6, all we like sheep gone astray. Where would we be without the Lord? We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid him the iniquity, the iniquity upon us all. We have need of a Savior. Hallelujah. We must remember whose we are and where God has brought us from. Let the people know, hallelujah, that we cannot serve two masters, people. 
We have to make a decision. Hmm. Hallelujah. Joshua in the 19th and 20th verse, he let them know that, that you cannot play with God. Mm -hmm. That you have to be serious about this thing. Okay. If you're going to say you're going to serve God, then serve God because God is ready to manifest himself through you. He's ready. He's yes. waiting on us. Yes. He has the dunamis power to do whatever the earth needs to turn That's all the situation great. around. So we have to trust in the Lord mm -hmm. with all of our heart and lead not to our own understanding. The 22nd verse says that, And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witness against yourselves that ye have chosen the Lord. I hear what you're saying. Now I'm going to see what you're going to do. Serve the Lord. All they said, We are witnesses. They said, Yea and Amen. Yea and Amen. Joshua told them then it's time to clean house. It's time to, if you're going to serve the Lord, you got to put away those old things. And you have to go back and get the strange gods out from among you and decline your heart unto the Lord, uh, God of, of Israel. So Joshua was telling the people that, okay, so now that you have come back, now you remember from which you have fallen. You remember from where you came from. You have to get rid of that old way of talking. You're going to have to get rid of that, that stuff that you got hid in the closet that don't nobody know nothing about. You're going to have to trust in the Lord with all your heart. You're going to have to clean out some things, and that's okay. Because when God tells us to clean out something, he will make us stronger, and he will give us more of him. Amen? Uh, Romans 1 and 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, and to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. Hallelujah. We must speak the Father's language. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I invite you to get to know him today. Yes. He is a promise keeper. Yes. It's as easy as ABC. Admit, believe, and confess. Admit you are a sinner, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and yes. confess that he is Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for his word today. I thank him for who he is. I thank him for what he has done. And I thank him for what he is going to do. The word for the house today is people we must, we must put that, we put his word in our heart that we may not sin against him. We have to sound the alarm and let the world know that we serve the true and living God. Amen. Amen.